All right, so now we are working on P1403 EGR solenoid circuit open circuit. So basically this first step, I think, is again to um, erase the, the codes and see if they set again. We, dis we just reset that and took it for a test drive. So the code did reset, so we're gonna circle that. Um, note, check the ECM for other ECMs, uh, e other DCCs for deleted to circuits that are open, shorted, ground, or low voltage problems. Um, we did have one, so I'm just gonna go ahead and circle yes. So we are gonna move to step three, which I think is gonna be to test those relays again. Um, so yeah, so this is to, this is just saying um, we're supposed to ground the engine relay control circuit uh, in cavity 46, uh, and then test 178. Uh, does the test light illuminate brightly for each circuit? Yes, we already tested that. Turn the ignition off. Disconnect EGR valve harness connector. Turn the ignition on. Using 12 volt test light connected to ground, check the engine control relay circuit um, relay output circuit in the EGR valve harness connector. Does the test light illuminate brightly? All right, so we're gonna test this next, and we have our pinout over here on the computer. All right, for this next test, we have the key turned on, and we have our. EGR plug disconnected here. I drew a diagram of the plug right here. So we've got the flat side over there, the round side over there. From the flat side moving over, we should have one as the control, two is black and gray, and that's the EC relay, and that's what we're supposed to be testing. The black and gray wire, and we can see that one there, have our test light here connected to ground. Let's go ahead and test that and see what we get. This might be hard to do one-handed, but we'll see if we can get it. All right, so that works. We've got that. Now the thing that I'm a little confused about again is the pin out of this does not appear to be accurate, because this is saying Control should be on the flat side over here, and it's on the other side. So that's interesting. All right, moving on to our next step here. We're supposed to turn the ignition off, disconnect the EGR valve from the harness connector, and disconnect the ECM harness connectors. Then we are going to measure the resistance between the EGR valve control circuit the EGR valve harness and connector and ground. So this is basically just disconnecting both ends of the control wire, which I think, yeah, is this uh, red and yellow one over here. So this guy right here. Um, we're just gonna disconnect both ends of that and then make sure that it's not grounded out somewhere. Okay, key is off. Key's out of there, ECU is out. Let's go check this to ground and see what we get. So we have this uh, set up here. I've got my multimeter. We are set to 2000 ohms because what we are looking for is resistance uh, below 2000 ohms. So here we go. We have the negative or one side connected to ground. And the other side, we're just gonna test uh, touch to this red and yellow wire right here. So let's see what we get. All right, we're getting nothing there at all, which is I think exactly what we're looking for. All right, so then the question is, is the resistance above 1,000 ohms? And the answer is yes. Uh, there is like basically infinite resistance. Uh, we have basically no continuity. So we are moving to step six. Turn the ignition off. Disconnect the EGR valve harness connector. Disconnect ECM harness connectors. Measure the resistance to, EC, to EGR valve control circuit. Um, of the EGR valve control circuit is the resistance below 10 ohms. All right, so this one, uh, we just need to run a jumper wire um, between the uh, harness connector at the ECU and here and test for resistance and we're gonna see what we get there. So we are looking to measure the resistance of the EGR valve control circuit. That is on 
uh, the C4 connector, which is the one that has 10 pins across. And the bottom right uh, should be number 40, uh, EGR valve control. And um, it should be a red and yellow wire. I'm going to just pop this black plug out of there real quick. All right, I have that out of there and you can see that bottom right one is labeled number 40 and has a red and a yellow wire in it. So I'm gonna just feed this in there and uh, go test our continuity. All right, then we're back here and the control wire should be that red and yellow one again here. I have this set to 20, I have it set to 200. We're looking for in the tens of ohms, so let's see what we get here. All right, and we have a very good connection there, very little resistance, point, 0.2 ohms it looks like uh, in that circuit, so that should be good. So we'll uh, check that off and move on. And I pulled this off, I opened this up just to see um, what was under there, and I've seen pictures of these used and they are nasty looking, but this thing is like literally brand new. I think this was just replaced. So I'm still hoping that this is good. I'm gonna put this back on. And um, that seems seated well. I don't know, we're gonna maybe go check the pin on the ECU and see what the deal is with that. All right, so someone suggested um, disconnecting the math sensor. Uh, that the MAF sensor might be potentially causing the problem, and I think we we have an answer. This thing is like full of power now. Feels so good. Uh, and it's not kicking back into limp home mode. So I think, yeah, I can hear that turbo just pumping, which feels so cool. So I think that confirms that we've got a MAF sensor issue. So I think that means that all we're gonna have to do is at worst replace the MAF sensor. And um, at best, we'll just uh, spend a little bit of time cleaning it tomorrow and be good. So that's pretty freaking exciting. Uh, this thing is driving really nice now. And that's even without a MAF sensor. And I think it should be even better with the MAF. So pretty stoked. So we're hooked up to the MAF sensor right now. And I believe we have a probe hooked up to the sensor wire this should be outputting like about two uh two and a half volts three volts somewhere in there and when we accelerate this should the voltage should go down but you can see it does not at all so i think we have a bad math sensor Okay, well now I plugged into the sensor ground instead of just the engine ground and we're getting a completely different voltage. But we're still getting no movement. So I think that still confirms we've got a bad sensor. All right, so we're just gonna go through here and just test everything, so. Um, I looked up the pin out to this. So this one is the 12 volts to the sensor. This one here is the sensor ground, the next one. This one is the five volt reference voltage. And then this one is the return voltage from the sensor. All right, so I've got the scope hooked up here. And when I first started up the vehicle, it looks like it maybe started to work. This is kind of what I imagine it's probably supposed to look like. Um, it's this oscillating signal, but this is what it's looking like right here. And I'll click play and you can see it's just kind of doing this right around one volt. Not changing at all, even when I rev the engine. Whereas more air goes through the sensor, those oscillations should go up. But we're not seeing anything there. Well, another theory is busted. Just took it for a drive with the MAF sensor unhooked. 
and EGR code came back uh, similar to how it did the first time when the MAF was connected. So that's fun. Um, so I'm going to try bending these inward a little bit so they can contact better potentially. I saw someone did that. I'm going to give that a try. Well, uh, bending the pins on this seems to have worked great. Um, had no problems with the EGR code when I took it out for a drive today, so that was awesome. So I just decided to try bending these pins on the MAF sensor, and I think we've solved it. I'm looking at the codes, and the MAF sensor code is not popping up anymore, uh, which is pretty awesome because it used to pop up immediately. So we'll take it for a drive probably tomorrow and see how it turns out. All right, so um, bending in those pins fixed the math sensor code that we had, uh, which is awesome. Uh, I think that means that it will not go into limp mode anymore uh, when the math sensor is plugged in. Uh, I did get a uh, math sensor plausibility code, P0100, uh, after just revving the engine a few times, um, which I think just means the math sensor is bad, which is what I was already suspecting. Um, and that would confirm the tests that we did earlier uh, where we were getting like one volt out of the math sensor. So um, I'm gonna do a little bit more research into that code, um, but my guess is we'll probably be replacing the math sensor pretty soon. Um, and either way, I think the van runs pretty good now. So, success.